So what could be the possible obstacles to forming this international coalition? Joining us with some perspective is Ruth Wedgwood. She's a professor at the School of Advanced International Studies at Johns Hopkins University here in Washington. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure to be here. First of all, how feasible do you think a coalition would be? And do you think Kerry can bring these countries together? He has a timeline by the start of the UN General Assembly in just a couple of weeks. Well, it depends what you mean by coalition. If you're talking about contribution of air power and forces, then the number of countries that really have the capability of doing this is quite limited. It's always been the problem. If you ever went to the Munich Security Conference in, in Garmisch, the Verkunda Conference, of NATO has been asking for years that countries would make the 2% GDP contribution to military capability. And except for the Brits and the French, it's always been a pretty tough haul. So I don't think it's going to be much military support, but it will be the kind of diplomatic support, support at the UN public support that uh, this president seems to like. And he's hoping that Arab states in the region can help uh, take his take the U.S. lead, for example, and, and have the force, have the troops on the ground. Do you think that is likely? And who would be possible participants or who should be in this coalition? Troops on the ground? Gosh, it's a very robust environment if you don't speak the uh, language, if you don't have intelligence sources. If you really don't know where you're, what, what you're getting into when you, when you land, there, there are very few countries that would do this. I, I used to work up in New York uh, in the 90s, in and around the UN, uh, watching peacekeeping. And it was very difficult to get countries to volunteer, even for relatively light duty peacekeeping jobs, much less very, very robust combat. So unless, uh, I mean, the Pakistanis, somebody, somebody with a, a real battle-hardened force cared to take part, I don't think you'll have very many volunteers to go into a robust environment like Syria. But it seems like there are so many, especially in that region, who have the common goal, or at least agree on, fighting IS. A lot of people are scared. The Turks, Turks are and should be scared. Uh, so I, I do think countries might be willing to consider it. But one of the problems in any kind of coalition operation is interoperability. What's the common language? Can you understand each other's English? Is your doctrine the same? Can you bring up your... Uh, a, a, equipment to meld with your, with your infantry forces. So it's, it's not a simple kind of um, uh, claymation, mix the head with the body kind of um, child's exercise. It's, unless you've trained to it, it's very difficult. I think the US, unfortunately, now is reducing its military investment. It's just, just the wrong time to have done it. It's too late to turn it around quickly. But I do think this is a real reality check for any White House, including this president, uh, that they should not lightly give up U.S. capability because push come to shove, we've become the kind of 911 for much of the world. So John Kerry is going out there to try to get something started. What is the answer then? What's the solution? Well, I think countries will give money. I think that uh, in some ways we'll, <laughs> it will mildly aid the budget deficit that will otherwise increase. Uh, it'll give us political cover if we have cover both from Sunni and Shia nations. It will make us look less like we're being clawed footed and stepping on Islam, which are, of course we're trying not to. Uh, but I don't think operationally it's going to do us that much good. I don't think we want to be in bed with Assad. He's a thug. Uh, and I do think that if we are wholly in his camp, then uh, any of the atrocities that he might commit and has committed might seem to be in our court. So it's, it's going to be very difficult. I, I, this is not a straightforward uh, red pennies, blue pennies, uh, line of battle kind of problem. It's an, a mobile force. It's as much a problem now in France and in England and all over Europe and Lord, God forbid here, uh, that uh, the kind of attraction that violence has for young men may have seduced many more people than we suppose. Iraq has a new uh, coalition, a, a united government, a unity government rather, um, but there are some key posts that are still unfilled. How can Iraq's government and these new lawmakers play a part in all of this? Uh, consultation? I don't. I would doubt very much we're going to ask for any votes on anything. Uh, the, 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 the deep connection to, to Iran in the prior government is very much in mind, uh, so you don't always know who you're dealing with. Uh, I think we're going to ask for permission, uh, for, for acquiescence, but not permission, and uh, give the appearance of consultation. But I don't think they can be very much used to us operationally on the ground. All right, Ruth Wedgwood, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much for your insight.